Ladies and gentlemen, get ready to strap in for the wildest super Easter egg speed run you've ever seen. This is going to be an hour and a half long. We are running through every single IW Zombies map from Spaceland to Attack to Shaolin to, uh, I just said Attack, I meant Rave, and then also beast from beyond and he's going to be taking on meth astopheles and so what makes these types of runs so unique i've never actually believed i've reacted to one of these is that you literally have to beat every single easter egg on director's cut mode to unlock mephistopheles and if you don't know what director's cut is you can tell by the character that he's playing on iw you get specific characters so this character willard weiler gives you the melee dagger that's like basically a bowie knife it's really good it can give you a ton of points a ton of ammo and all that and so now it's interesting because he's doing the space line easter egg he spun the box to get the head cutter and he has to get perfect rng on all of these maps and the boss fight to hit the world record. There's only two people that I know that actually go and go for this run. So shout out to Menobot, which is the man that got the previous record, and 6KZ. Y'all need to check these guys out because for real, they're just nobody that's doing it like this. And so if you're also wondering why he's got this like exo jump ability. It's because of his evade fate and fortune card. It's probably the best fate and fortune card in all of Spaceland because that was this game's version of Gobblegums. It obviously wasn't as great as the Mega or the Ultra Rare Megas, but I'm telling you this Evade freaking fortune card is just incredible. You can literally travel so fast and it takes out a ton of zombies while you're moving. It's literally a speedrunner's wet dream right here. And so for Spaceland, it is a highly important map to run this on because listen, even though Spaceland's Easter egg is very quick considering that you can see his splits there where it's only 14 minutes even with director's cut mode it's insane because again you have to do so many easter eggs perfectly and you cannot mess up like these runs you literally have to hit world record runs back to back and you're gonna see that he pauses the timer once the easter egg finishes and then once he loads into the new map so he spawns in a kaboom gets the round over and gets his baby kendall's in there to get his mustang and sally type weapon which is going to be huge on this man he's got it here the uh, movement with this card is just so different like if you played iw watching this is completely different to what you'd usually play like because evade changes everything and so already he's got SETICOM built sub three minutes so that's disgusting Keep in mind, you do spawn in with all perks. You also spawn in with 25,000 points. And you can play Willard Wilder on Spaceline, which just makes it that much easier. So SETICOM is up. He got so lucky with these world record runs. I'm telling you, these guys know the exact spawns of the SETICOM. If you don't know, you have to basically protect this thing for 60 seconds. Make sure that the health bar does not complete to zero. And then do that three times until you can complete this easter egg that is spaceland it's not easy i'm telling you it's not easy especially because iw like i know it is easier with the director's cut because yeah you can just get all the weapons out of the box pack a punch which he just did and he got a wonder weapon and he has all the perks so he is in a very beneficial situation to do this however if you're doing this without the uh director's cut mode it can be very very difficult even if you're fully stacked up because man you really you literally need a max ammo there's so many zombies that come after you during this step and so space lads easter egg is very simplistic i do like simplistic easter eggs that are hard to find initially hard to treasure hunt you know that's kind of the best part about these easter eggs so he's getting incredibly not lucky also with his drops here and listen for him to beat meno i've seen meno in my streams whenever i play iw zombies this man is an absolute beast Okay, like every time I do attack the radioactive thing where there's like 900 chemistry steps, this man knows how to do it instantly. How? I don't know. I guarantee you this man, 6KZ and Menno are probably the two people in the entire world that can literally beat those Easter eggs in like sub 20 minutes. Like if you look at all of his splits right now, he's been beating all of these Easter eggs in sub 20 minutes that's what makes it so interesting because there's so much to take after and to watch and for a super easter egg run to be soloable in under that time this is easily the hardest super easter egg ever but also 
one of the most rewarding ones to watch, especially for a speed run. And the other thing is, is like Mephistopheles is quite literally the hardest boss fight in all of Call of Duty Zombies. And for you to beat that on your first attempt is insanely difficult, especially after doing the Beast from Beyond Easter egg, which is a massive pain. That Easter egg you can do super fast. And so, yeah, you can see that the splits there are probably going to be incredibly fast. But again, you have to do it all consecutively. So whatever RNG you get is the RNG that you get. And if you have bad luck on one of the maps, like let's say the second or third map, it's such a pain to reset because you're literally wasting so much time playing these maps just to optimally get your best luck in. And so he's got second SETI cop, I would say one of the best spots. They only come from these two hallways. And again, to know these spots and to understand this takes just hundreds of hours of practice. And I genuinely wonder how many hours both Menno and 6KZ have put in to get a 90 minute super Easter egg world record. This is genuinely unheard of y'all. So second SETI comp is about to end. He's going to be able to perfectly end the round. Unfortunately, with the SETI comp rounds, you get infinite zombies. He also used this teleporting grenade, which I never would have thought was used in the speedrun, but it actually is to teleport you back to the spawn here, which could potentially show you the next SETI comm locations. This is also the area in Spaceland, which has the fastest spawns, which is surprising considering it's such a vastly open area. Goes to show that all the IW Zombies maps, or at least Spaceland, was a huge map and for this to be the fastest in the spawns is kind of crazy like maybe nocturne toten is even faster so he's standing here he got the third seti comp part exactly to the t this is insane my guy i'm genuinely flabbergasted he also has the tornado card which you're gonna be seeing that a lot throughout this run in a lot of the other maps especially during mephistopheles because I would probably say it's like the second best card in this game. It is basically like a tornado that goes around and takes out all the zombies no matter what the round. It is an incredible, incredible fate and fortune card. It is used for a lot of boss waves to clear a lot of enemies to take out the bosses. He also just took down the freaking zombie boss like it was nothing there and so... Again, Space Line is going to be an absolute breeze. Also, the way that they cheese the alien boss fight at the end, where they just spam all the ammo with an infinite ammo drop. IW was different, man. I give this game a lot of credit, even though back in the day I didn't, because seriously, this by far, I think, is one of the best zombie games mechanically ever to be released in all of Call of Duty, period. Like, seriously, who would have thought that a non trayek developer, IW Zombies, freaking Lee Ross, was able to be able to hold up to Treyarch practically by himself. And I even say give the best super Easter egg that Call of Duty Zombies has ever seen. This is better than Black Ops Cold War super Easter egg. It's better than BO3, it's better than BO4, and it's not even Treyarch. And that is always to be stated on how incredible of a super Easter egg this is. And so, that's why I really believe that for people that aren't watching this, my Treyarch only viewers, I hope you enjoy this Easter egg speedrun because seriously, I know a lot of people ask me, I only play BO3, what game should I buy? I would either tell you to buy BO4 because it is truly the direct sequel of BO3 despite it being that good and despite what people say, or IW. Like IW, I feel like you could have a great time. I do feel like the BO4 maps are better though, so it depends on what you actually like within the game. So now all three SETI comms are done. He needs to end the round so that he can give it back to Hasselhoff and get the dial stones. And the dial tones are for the boss fight because I mean, pretty much that is it for the Space Line Easter Egg. With director's cut, with all the money that you can have, just buying all, opening the doors and all that. It's incredible. It's incredible, man. Honestly, Lee Ross did not have to do this. I don't know where Lee Ross is right now. I know he's somewhere in the UK, but he's far from developing for Call of Duty. Please, Lee Ross, we want to see more future projects because you literally knocked it out of the park with this game, for real. And I feel so bad for you for getting all that backlash on the IW Zombies trailer and all that. But man, it's been some time now. This game is coming up on six years now. So the fact that this is going to be hopefully updated someday with a new lee ross ip i would love to see it lee ross come back and so look at this tornado you thought it wasn't op look at this it's going through the freaking maps of walls to take out the zombies 
And so he's also timed it perfectly to have a max ammo round with the clowns here. And so now he's going to be able to do it again. He throws down another teleporting grenade. He's running up towards the spot again to fill up these zombies. Because I believe once you do all the SETI comms, you have to actually go through two rounds uh, to give it back to Hasselhoff. I don't know why Hasselhoff takes his times with the rounds, but he takes his time. And so again, a lot of the speed run is literally just killing zombies, which is why the tornado ability is so important. It is so powerful. I'm curious also when he's going to be running explosive touch. I'm assuming he's going to be running it just before uh, the final boss, because there is a point where before the final boss, you have to take down a full wave of clowns. And so explosive touch does help out with that and does make it so that they don't actually delete you but honestly this will be interesting to see when he runs it so you just quickly ended off the rounds here and then he's going to instantly run now to where david hasseloff is and so now david hasseloff has definitely switched from the original area that he was he's not over here so he's unfortunately at long spawn or maybe he oh what is, what is he doing maybe he already got it no he's doing something funky right now i don't know what exactly he's doing he hit that teleporter nade. Oh, he's looking for David Hasselhoff. You went to the wrong side. Dang, so just a couple minutes he lost there. Man, I thought he would have been on the other side too. So for real, bro, that's not even on you. Because like usually David Hasselhoff only stays at a spot for about three to four rounds. But I guess sometimes he can stay even upwards of like five or six. That is... The more you know, man, I'm telling you, all these good maps, you always learn something about them throughout the years. Like, there's just so many little things that they put in them. That's what I miss about old zombies, man. The love, care, and dedication was outmatched by anything we see today. And so now he's getting a specific code to hit both Spaceland or Kepler system, Journey into Space, Pack-a-Punch, and Polar Peak, the red, green, blue, yellow code, which he figures out. But you can literally hear it through the UFO. You notice how he's not even looking up to see the color. You can just tell by the noise that it says. And I feel like these guys have played it so many times that they can just literally listen to it. Know the exact right nose, nose, noise, and just hit the perfect one. Which is really impressive. It goes to show that, like, man, Spaceland is a different level of an Easter egg. Honestly, it may look easy that somebody can beat this within 14 minutes. But the fact that he's going to be able to do this so fast is insane. He's looking at his freaking friend list right now, buddy. What is going on here? He's, he's whipping out the friend list. I mean, honestly, he didn't hit the best RNG even on Spaceline. But he's just like, bruh, let's just head on out with it. Uh, and so, yes, the UFO takes some time as well. It's going to take some time to cycle through. And he's using the head cutter to slow them down. It's a really smart idea. Also, he probably did get one of the better pistols because unfortunately the Spaceline Wonder Weapons are terrible. They only last up until about like round 30-ish. And uh, it just sucks, man. That is one of the biggest L's about this map, I'd have to say, is that the Wonder Weapons are just terrible. The only way to get to high rounds is by using the Alligator Mouth in uh, Kepler. Which just sucks, man. It just sucks because this map is just something else for real. So, now he needs to only do one more round of basically Simon Says with the Dial Domes here. And then after that, it's Clown Round and then Boss Fight. And then after Boss Fight, he just has to shoot the ring over there that you're seeing on the screen right now. At spawn and all the dots. And then that's pretty much it. And the greatest part about hitting the upgraded Wonder Weapon so early is that you need an upgraded Wonder Weapon to do this step. And, I mean, he's already got it, so... He already knows what to do. So again, his final code is coming up here. He's going to be able to hit it. Rave is going to be an interesting one because I feel like Rave is kind of like Dead of the Night. It's just a park fest. There is a lot of parts, a lot of little things to be picking up on that map. And so here we go. Mans is done. His file dial tone step. If you do fail those, you do get a freaking big boy that spawns in. But he, he, don't, he ain't got none of that. Clowns are coming in and you can see, look how just dangerous this is. So, I'm curious, like, he is going to be running the infinite ammo for the boss, but, like, oh, here it is. Explosive touch is coming out. Look how fast he gains the charge meter up for infinite ammo, because he, he needs to get it again. But, man, this explosive touch is just dirty. So, there it is. Infinite ammo's up. He's ready to go. He's literally just going to spam on the boss fight with the freaking head cutter. 
He literally knows the exact point as well. He gets instantly damaged right as when he freaking walks out the portal. Telling the alien life forms to head back where they came from for real right here. This is insane, bro. So he knives two of the battery packs and then boss is down. Final step is to literally shoot the rings over this and hope that the UFO will be over it. But because you're a speedrun, you just got to shoot all of it no matter what. And it's going to be over it at the right time. And that is going to be time. He actually did get a faster run before, which is insane. And so I'm curious to see which map he takes the massive lead on. Like maybe there's a new skip with IW. I know a lot of people speedrun IW Zombies map specifically. Like, I actually just interviewed a guy named Zay who was speedrunning Shaolin Shuffle. And so that was really cool. But man, it is also interesting to see how fast these maps get taken out specifically. Because there's no way you can hit all these world records in a row, pretty much, right? And so here you go. He's hit his time split. He's now pretty much ready to just end the game and back it up. So now he's going to switch up his cards, start it up. Let's check out Rave here. He is going to be wearing the Kevin skin. I'm not sure if that gives you an advantage on Rave. I'm pretty sure it doesn't. He opens up door straight ahead. That is crazy. So he's got the bat here. This Easter egg might be the most strange Easter egg ever. And you're going to see that he's going in a specific area just to pick up parts pretty much. And the Wonder Weapons on Rave are a lot better than they are on Spaceland. Like, the crossbows are actually viable for the higher rounds. But not as much as, let's say, like, the Treyarch Wonder Weapons, I would say. Like, it ain't no Thunder Gun, you know. It is what it is. Uh, but still, man, the creative ing ingenuity for these games are really something else. And I just don't understand why devs don't just give Wonder Weapons infinite damage. Don't know why they started taking that ability out, especially from Black Ops 1. Because that was like the coolest thing in Black Ops 1. The Thunder Gun was just infinite damage. The Wonder Wolf 2, just infinite damage. I mean, the very first Wonder Weapon, other than the Ray Gun, I guess, was infinite damage. I mean, the Ray Gun is now in Black Ops Cold War, but... Again, so Ray V has to turn on the power here. Again, this one's just going to kind of be a boring world record to watch. I've seen this one before, but... It is very impressive still, too, at the same time, because there's so many little parts that you have to know and understand to pick up. And for somebody to be able to understand perfectly all of the world record speedrun shots for all of IW Zombies, and hit it all in a specific run, and take down Mephistopheles, that's something else. That is something else. Like, seriously, this is not... I'm telling you, like, less than five people can, do, can even attempt this speedrun and get a good run let alone like even hit an hour and a half like usually it takes someone an hour and a half to do all of these speed runs let alone just one of them and so this is the infamous raven the redwoods wait nine hundred thousand years for this boat it is cool because yes you as you can see here you can actually go through rounds here but look he's not able to even ads any far left because it just stops him and because he is playing on Director's Cut, he's literally got the Wonder Weapon already, the Ripsaw. It's going to be interesting to see if that actually helps anywhere within the Easter Egg. Because the boss fight for this is a lot more challenging than the one in Spaceland. There is like, multiple phases to him. So that, I believe, is where also the majority of this Easter Egg is going to be spent. But honestly, like the, the way that you can get through this Easter Egg is incredibly fast. Like... Like I said, it's just a bunch of different parts that you have to pick up. And then you have to throw a couple sausages at some deer heads on the wall for some reason. And then that will give you uh, more Easter egg parts and a pack a bunch part. And again, Evade is also up in here. It's also crazy because I think Evade is going to be in every single freaking one of these runs. It's going to be the main way that you get to these high rounds for real. Like not high rounds, but the Easter egg. Um, so here he's running now. Still got to go grab some more parts. There, are, like the spawns also for the deers here. You're gonna see one. I think that's where he's going to right now. Oh, he grabbed the telenade. Ah, so it's right there. Interesting. Yeah, this telenade shroud is really cool because yes, for speedrunners, it is better. Like, could you imagine having a telenade like that in like the Origins Mound Room where you do the staffs? It'd be broken, man. It'd be literally game-changing. And so to see that on maps like this... I mean, granted, you don't have to make all four of the Wonder Weapons on this map. But 
it is very cool to see how you're going to be able to like teleport throughout. And so here, he's doing the first step now. And the challenges for the Easter egg are quite fun. You have to go in the rave mode here. And then when you go in the rave mode, you have to take out their arms here. And then take out their legs. And then take out their head. It's in certain different areas. And so, this is like a little query thing. So now you can see that he's aiming for their arms. It's very difficult to aim for their arms. And that is why... This step can be very difficult, and that's why I also understand why he has a weapon with a freaking thermal scope on. Because, I mean, look at this. It's hard to see the zombies in and of itself in this mode. And, like, yeah, like, just, <laughs> like, just because look at them. It's hard to tell. And also, unfortunately, you can tell. I think the worst part about this map is when you go into rave mode, it destroys the bitrate when somebody streams this map. Like, it just looks terrible. It looks great on the streamer's, like, screen, but it just looks horrid on the recording, and, and that's that's the unfortunate bit there. So, now he's done that step. Unfortunately, you do have to go up to where Kevin actually is in the map, which is Pack Punch, and this is the literal fastest way to do it. I'm assuming he's putting the teleport grenade over on this island so he doesn't have to take the boat ride again. That's really smart. I don't even think I saw that in the world record run of rave in the past that is really really interesting so there we go he's going to be able to do that and then i'm curious like how is he how is he going to be able to cheese the boss like that is going to be something i'm very very interested in like is the boss going to be cheated just like with the rip saw because I'm, I'm curious what is what what the rip saw is for maybe that's just for grabbing certain zombie parts like the legs or the head but i'm pretty sure it's not it ain't it ain't all that it ain't all that y'all so finally, this boat ride, boat ride is over. He's literally, it's so funny because the boat ride takes like a freaking year. And all he's going to do is literally just talk to this dude, throw down the freaking grenade and leave. <laughs> oh man. Listen, Lee, I love this map, but that boat had to go, bro. You saw Garod Crowvy at this point added fast travel with that type of stuff. Why did they not add that on this map? We will truly never know, man. I also feel like Rave is where people started to really fall off on IW Zombies. And it's not necessarily to say that this is a bad Zombies map. Because honestly, I think the layout of this map is really unique. Um, I think it's just mainly that people just started not liking IW Zombies. Uh, which is just too bad. Because, I mean, out of all the Zombie game modes, I feel like this one, I did even said this earlier. I believe that this one is the most similar to BL3. And the, probably the one I would recommend people buying, you know. So, now he's going to do the legs challenges. You can do this also with the balloon trap, which causes all the zombies to just get sucked up in, like, this monkey bomb. Huff helium, and they fly away, and it blows off their legs. It's just some wild stuff. <laughs> IW was different, bro, for real. Oh, so he's using the ripsaw, actually, to take out the chainsaw guy. Get a max ammo. Wow. Then he hits the telefrag, gets the thing that he needs, the final portrait, of the easter egg this easter egg is really cute as well it's about kevin's friend and essentially like how they fell apart and how they're like trying to get back together it's a really cute easter egg i i um i think we're a cod zombies mode for real they need to add more like easter eggs like that like little condensed stories that are fun i think that's what people love about stuff like mob the dead like it's a little condensed story about four prisoners escaping that's what makes it fun that's what the adventure of zombies is about i love just getting lost into the lore of a zombies map and making it feel like i'm actually like engaging with that you know and rave i mean rave is preposterous listen like it's dr you're taking drugs in the forest would activision ever even greenlight something like this probably not uh in 2023 at least um but it's so cool seeing it so final challenge here he's, he's doing the headshots this is obviously the easiest one because i mean the heads are probably the biggest body part to be able to aim for He's able to do this now. He's got his ripsaw up here to take down this guy. It's so interesting that this was the main reason for the ripsaw to get all the max ammo because now he's pretty much almost boss fight ready. He's done the majority of the Easter egg. And again, Space Line and Rave are almost like brother and sister. They're very similar. Very, very similar. I would just say that Rave does add a couple little extra benefits and a better Wonder Weapon set. But I do like Space Line. A little bit more and so now 
The final boat ride is going to be happening here. I'm curious to see, though, what exact weapon he's going to be using for this boss fight. Because I feel like this boss fight can be quite challenging. And you can tell that he's on boss fight now because Kevin is in the boat with him. And if, spoiler alert for literally like 20 seconds from now. Homie falls into the water and becomes the boss, which is really cool. I like that. Like, they were really thinking about how you're going to, like spend your whole time on the easter egg with the character that ends up becoming the boss and so you feel bad about taking him out i love when treyarch like put those thoughts and details into that and this wasn't even treyarch this is freaking iw bro infinity ward so it really makes you think that man like that's what i love about zombies i've always said this it's not even about the zombies it's about the world that you make around it it's like what type of adventure or story can you tell me like the zombies are just the afterthought zombies are just almost like how you make money it's almost like capitalism but cod zombies you you get money by taking them out you know like it's just, <laughs> it's just some weird analogy but honestly it, i hope you guys feel the same way like people always think that i'm like super into all these like other zombie ips like walking dead and freaking all this other stuff and i'm like nah man the COD Zombies is not even about the zombies, and that's why I love it. It's, it's about the adventure. It's about the vibes, you know? And so now, 25 minutes in, he's almost done two Easter eggs onto the Raven, the Redwoods boss fight. Unfortunately, the bitrate is going to be absolutely tragic here, because unfortunately, the whole boss fight is in rave mode. And as you can tell, we are looking at a 480p stream right now. And so he's using the Ripsaw to take out all the zombies. You can also use the Ripsaw here towards filling up the souls he grabs a max ammo for the saw here because he is using all the freaking ammo he's making sure that it is a literal insta kill and the saw was one of the best wonder weapons i think in iw before they patched it you could literally just afk hold down the trigger and just get to freaking round 100 i think pretty patch on this it was just so dumb busted um but now yeah, he is filling up the souls because the way you do this is you fill up some souls and then there will be a weak spot that spawns in on the boss. You keep shooting him and then repeat that again while adding in another phase where he basically just turns the whole map on fire. And it's cool. Like, honestly, one of the most innovative boss fights, I would honestly say this is probably one of my more favorite boss fights. It's, I mean, nothing crazy unique, but it is more unique than a lot of the other stuff we've been seeing recently. Also, really unique as well that he's using the saw to actually hit the weak spots as soon as they spawn in. Like, you have to know this boss fight inside and out to even know the exact areas and locations to shoot when these symbols spawn in. Like, he knows the exact body part to shoot when they happen, and so that is insane. It also is a lot harder to use a regular bullet gun here to shoot the weak spots because they make you unload like a whole freaking clip, you know? And so it's cool that the rip saw, you only need to use one saw because it's based off of how much damage you're doing. And so, I mean, with the rip saw being able to literally shoot the saws, that's what makes it so incredibly powerful. And so, yep. Anything outside of the green circle does get destroyed. They tried to pull basically like a Derizon Draft boss fight. Again, DLC 1, I always have to say, is the most important DLC of your entire game. It really is. DLC 1 dictates the entire game's DLC lifecycle. And I've literally said this in everything. Like, Rave in the Redwoods DLC 1 was a step down from Space Land, and it goes to show that with the rest of the DLC season, that ended up being a step down as well. Same thing with Dead of the Night, same thing with BO3 Dur Eisendrack. That was DLC 1, and because of that, all the other maps were just incredible. And that is why I still stand firm to that statement of DLC 1 dictates the entire ebb and flow of all of call of duty zombies like it literally dictates the season pass like i said to rise your rack we got a great season pass dead of the night eh, i mean yeah we uh, you know it was good and bad it was good and bad exactly like dead of the night good and bad right so i believe it because honestly every single game that i just listed dictates that and so i stand by that hopefully you guys can see it that way as well and also it also sucks, because if you get a bad DLC 1... Like, for example, Firebase Z was not a bad DLC 1 for Cold War. 
But it wasn't anything like groundbreaking from D-Machine, right? And so because of that, we sort of just realized, well, this is probably going to be what the rest of the season pass was, which is true. Even though I would say that Firebase Z is probably the weakest of the DLCs. Um, it, I, I don't know. I do think that, yeah, most of the maps were just kind of like, how can we make more D-Machine? You know, and that's not a bad thing. It's just... Diversity is so cool in COD Zombies. I think that is what makes Black Ops 3, for example, so incredible. Each of the maps is just vastly different from the other. It feels like you're literally playing a whole other game on the same game. Um, and yeah, I really feel like the last game, though, that has really done that, to be quite honest, is not even Black Ops Cold War. It's definitely not Vanguard. It's probably literally IW or BO4, which is insane to me. Insane to me that like maps used to have their own themes, their own layout, their own ideas, design behind it. And now we just be getting freaking campaign stuff. I mean, granted, back in the day, campaign was very, very reminiscent to what Zombies was. I mean, every single World of War Zombies map is from a campaign or multiplayer map. So it just, I don't know. I just miss when Activision was like, let's put a budget into zombies let's let's literally make it something crazy like do you all remember when shadows of evil had a freaking roller coaster at six flags people forget about that but i don't forget about that because i'm like bro i've never heard of a video game getting its own freaking roller coaster especially for shadows of evil what i would have done to go back in time to freaking go on that coaster i mean i'm telling you that would have been something else because i will be honest everybody that went on that coaster i've seen some youtube footage these homies don't even play Shadows of Evil. They don't know what they'd be looking at. And that's why I'm like, bro, I wonder what type of stuff they set up, bro. They probably even had, like, the freaking Shadows of Evil swords up and all these props. And Oh, man. This makes a homeboy sad because we went from such great lengths like that with a freaking roller coaster. Zomb and that was not even for the game. That was for Shadows of Evil. You know, honestly, that's going to be my new argument. I'm just going to say, people are going to be like, what's the best Zombies map ever? It's not Kino. My personal favorite is Garod, but I truly believe the best ever that I, that the community grieves on is probably Shadows. Because the whole map got a freaking roller coaster. It don't get more crazy than that, y'all. That's the way it is. So, either way, though, he's about to be done this boss fight. He is filling up the final steps here. The only difference between the phases that you can see here, if you can see even past the bitrate is that there's blue little defense walls that go up between some of the mounds on the island to make it a little bit more difficult for you to traverse. But honestly, this boss fight is really easy, actually. Like, you just avoid his jumps. You avoid the fire around the map, which is, again, very, very easy. And just know how to shoot his weak points. And he'll be taken down very, very quickly. He's about to be taken down right here because now... His defense mechanism is fully out, and I'm assuming this Ripsaw is literally going to melt right into him as soon as it can. I'm just, I'm expecting it, bro. Look at this. So, yeah, he's doing the weak points. As soon as this weak point is done, he's literally just going to instantly die. It is just hilarious. Buddy is glitched. Where are you going, my guy? Where is he going? What is homeboy doing? <laughs> oh, oh. Like, dude, this is what I'm saying, man. Like, when people glitch these boss fights, it's so funny to me. Because, like, I just don't think... I never think the developers are like, yeah, somebody's gonna glitch this in, like, five years from now. They never say that, bro. And, yeah, unfortunately, the weak spots take forever. He does add the claw, which is a weapon that you get for 30 seconds from IW Multiplayer that they added in Zombies. And this thing is just gonna eviscerate him. Wow, so that was faster. So the Ripsaw was used for the whole boss fight. Wow. I thought for sure he was going to get one of the upgraded crossbows, like the Vlad or something. But wow, he proved to not need it. The Ripsaw is way better. And again, you would not be able to do this on a regular rave in the Redwoods run. You can't get the Ripsaw until you beat the Easter Egg unless you're doing it on Director's Cut mode like he's doing right now. And so there you go. He does grab the key. And then that will be time, obviously. I will show you guys this next stop here because literally the Easter Egg cutscenes are like five seconds. And they show you that the next area is Shaolin Shuffle. So let's get into it. And again, he can pause midway through, take a break, take his time, load up into these maps, 
and enjoy his game playthrough. But dude, starting Shaolin with 33 minutes to beat Rave and Spaceland is literally insane. I'm telling you, only two people are doing this. He's bought the Banshee. Interesting choice as well here. Very interesting that he goes for the Banshee. The Banshee, I don't care what Call of Duty Zombies game it's in. It's in IW, it's in BL3, whatever. It's just trash. Even a multiplayer for BL3, I swear, that shotgun is just horrendous. And that is why it's a freaking starting room weapon here, my guy. So... Again with Shaolin, this is obviously the hardest Easter egg I would say in all of IW Zombies. And it's right in the middle here. And so this is where I think you either make or break your super Easter egg speed run. And this is probably where he got a very fast time considering he's 30 seconds ahead of his previous split, which is huge. Also, he's running a card right now to instantly get one of his weapons pack a punch. I'm curious to see which weapon he does it for. Oh, it's not instantly. It's the next thing that you buy, I think, will be papped. Um, and so that'll be interesting here. He's staying in the spawn room because, yeah, you do need literally... There's all the points on this... All the doors on this map cost, like, gazillions of points. So I'm not surprised that he's staying in here. Probably also until the zombies can run faster, too. And, again, I would love to see 6KZ and Menno speed run for this because, listen, Menno is an absolute G. Shout out to this man. He is the reason I even I'm able to do attack the radioactive thing when I try and stream it for you guys because without this man doing the chemical step, I literally don't know how I would do it. And so I'm curious to see if 6KZ is as fast as Metalbot is for that once we get to attack, which is actually the next map. We only have Shaolin today left. What am I saying today left? On the stream left. Shaolin, attack, and beast. And that's it. And then Meph. Meph is pretty much its own map though, so... Get ready to strap in. I'm telling y'all, we are still a whole hour out for this beam fully completed. I'm curious what round he's actually going to leave. Is it round five? Ah, he's staying till round five actually so that he can get his Kung Fu juice when it spawns on round five. I see. That's why he's staying in here. And so, yeah, it literally is no point to leave the spawn until round five. Interesting. Because he hasn't even used his freaking shotgun yet. He got a freaking fire sale. This could be huge. Sorry, it's not a fire sale. It's a double points. I, they switch up the icons on IW. So here he talks to Pam. Pam Greer is an absolute nightmare. Also interesting that he goes for the Tiger Chi over the other ones. I do believe the Tiger one is the better ones. I believe the other ones are cool, but like the abilities for this one are much more important. And again, you do have to get these abilities up to a very high tier, I would say, or at least get it to tier one. To get the ninja shuriken because yes you do need the ninja shuriken for the next next easter egg step where you're literally just following an 8-bit pixel rat around the map this map was a really cool thought process i really like the map layout is amazing i really do love it and there he goes he gets the rat coming out throws the ch the cage up spawns the nuke to get rid of the spawns and then the round that's huge but I'm going to be real, the super Easter egg, or the Easter egg on this map, needs to be abolished. Like, it was so glitchy at spawn. Like, sure, it's better now once you know the steps, but man, I don't know what Lee Ross was thinking with this Easter egg, man. This might be one of the most tedious zombies Easter eggs ever to be created. He's looking at those specific posters around the map because he needs to know all of the number codes... Because there's a step later on where you literally have to transfigure a message through one of the posters and you put it on a spotlight. Like, this Easter egg is just preposterous. It's too much. There's a lot of parts for this map as well. You have to pick up the three most obscure parts ever around the map. Four pack bunch. He's got two of the three of them now being this little poster and a film reel. He's getting power up all around the map and you have to keep your Kung Fu Chi mode out to essentially open up all these areas. I didn't know you could actually open them up with the ninja shurikens like that. That is cool. I will definitely have to keep that in. He's also doing this while the rat is running around and that's crazy considering that he literally has the whole spawn mapped out so that he can optimally do this while turning on everything on the map. This is really impressive. I think this will obviously be the most impressive speedrun considering there is just an infinite amount of things to do on this. 
And so I'm not surprised if he's going to be pausing here and then just to like write down certain codes and certain things that you need because you literally need to transfigure a whole freaking alphabet for this Easter egg and do Morse code. Like seriously, this might be one of the most laborious Easter eggs ever, which is such a shame because the Wonder Weapons, like the Kung Fu is so unique. It's so interesting. The map is really cool too, but... Everything else kind of just falls flat. I'm gonna be honest. It, ju it just, like, the Easter egg, if the Easter egg was better, I swear this map would be, like, way more remembered than it is because I know most people despise this map, including myself, because of the Easter egg. And because the Easter egg is pretty much the main thing to do on this map, it's awful. And also, casual players, I feel like, despise this map because it's just too many things to be able to even just turn on PAP and power. Just way too much, man. And so, it'll be interesting to see also what time he finishes this Easter egg. Because he started this 33 minutes. And I believe this will probably be the longest Easter egg of all of them. Because attack, you can literally do in under 20 minutes if you know how to do it. Which is obviously what 6KZ is going to be able to do here. Beast, you can literally do in practically under 10 almost. And so, yeah, this is easily the longest and the hardest. And you can tell that they stopped doing hard Easter eggs after this map, which is just thank you. What a godsend, man. Because for real, this is not a fun Easter egg to go back to. Every time I have to do this or ever do this during like an IW Super Easter egg run or whatnot, it is just painful. And dude, it's so funny because the last time I did an IW Easter egg, Super Easter egg, it took me a couple days to beat, and it's wild to think that somebody did a couple days of work for me in 90 minutes. That goes to show, ladies and gentlemen, work smarter, not harder. <laughs> That's the dang proof right there, my guy. And so now he has to put this code in here, open this up. There's just so many random steps on here. You have to shoot certain symbols around this map also. He is going to be doing a time trial step here. I'm curious to see if he is going to be incorporating this or if it's just to be able to loop you back in. I think that's actually the thing. Yeah, he's using it to loop him back in. Very smart. That is really cool that it actually makes you go a lot faster just for that one specific thing. Because that's a side Easter egg. But um, the side Easter egg is for something completely different. I believe it's for the nunchucks. And for the nunchucks... The nunchucks are incredible. Uh, but the sword, though, on this map is better. I will say that the wonder weapons on this map are probably the best in the whole game. Like, Beast from Beyond just copies Extinction. Attack the Radioactive Thing has the Mad, which is quite literally probably the worst wonder weapon. One of the worst weapons ever. It's so bad. And, um, yeah, like, Shaolin's got it good, man. So now he's doing a, a step where he basically has to look throughout the entire map and shoot five symbols in a row. This step literally makes me want to just rip my eyes out because seriously, like there's like 20 plus spawns for this. This is almost as bad as the blood of the dead bird step. And my question is why? Like just why would you do this? It's also curious because... He's shooting these spawns also, like, without even looking at the symbol half the time. And he's probably going to be able to do this step very quickly. Because, yeah, the spawns for this are just a nightmare. Like, look at that. Who would ever, in their right mind, look at that spot? For real. No, for real. Be honest with me. Who would legitimately ever do that, ever? And so he's looking for all these freaking spots here. And also, it can be glitchy sometimes. I still think, even to this day... Where they don't spawn in. And he's looking for them all right now. Uh, wow. You can even tell through there it'll gl glow red maybe if there's a spawn or something. That is interesting. These strats for the speedrun are really unique. Because not many people, even in 2023, I feel like play or speedrun these Easter eggs. And like I said, for do to do this all consecutively. To not forget something. To not mess up. And then also do the meth boss fight is... This is probably one of the hardest things in all of Call of Duty Zombies as a speedrun. Because the level of perfection is just so hard. You can't mess up even once. You legit can't even mess up even once. So, again, he's probably just waiting to find all these symbols. Because, yeah, the symbols are terrible. He's now doing Morse code, which 
Again, this is crazy to even do in your first attempt because also the zombies can still be running after you at this point. The zombies were still running after him at that point. He's just lucky to be on such a low round, like round seven, to have walkers still for IW. And so he has his Morse code step. And essentially what the Morse code tells you is it tells you the right poster to pick up. And so this is the poster now where he has to go to the top of the map, place it down, and literally just do an imaginative freaking step with an imaginative letter step. And he has to throw a grenade at that window Break it down, place the poster on the spotlight here, go through a little bit of ninjas here, and then he's going to get a letter. And based off that letter, he will have to learn a combination of an alphabet and also the potential letters that it could be or words that it could be for him to do this. So he gets an L. What a lovely letter to start. He switches it. So now it's N. And yeah, like literally it is faster to switch to certain words on this. This step is an insane amount of knowledge to be able to speed run because it's fully random like you have to shoot symbols that are representative of english letters that spell a random word and it can be literally anything like for easter egg hunters that were trying to hunt this i'm sorry i just have to say that i'm sorry like sure his word here is new york so he got a pretty easy word but man that step must have been a freaking nightmare at the beginning like, just a nightmare. Um, especially because you wouldn't even have known what the letters were until you test them out. So the trial and error for that Easter egg must have been egregious. And so he's done the little Rat King uh, death there now. I do like that you have to take out the Rat King to get all of his abilities. That was really cool. Like, the ideas behind these Easter eggs are really something else. And also, he's got the little film blip right next to my webcam there, ind indicating that he's going to be teleported to this area in a couple of rounds to do the final Easter egg part where he grabs this little thing. Uh, there's just so many parts for these, man. And that's, I think, the worst part about it is that they probably had Activision be like, yo, you have to really time gate these Easter egg steps and make it as hard as physically possible. And unfortunately, because of that, it just ruins the maps because when you add steps that are tedious for literally no reason... It just ruins the ebb and flow of these maps, I feel like. So, it is what it is. And so, now he's waiting at the pap here to open up all the doors and go through the spawns. I'm not totally sure why. This area is probably also the fastest area in Shaolin for spawns. This weapon is also insane. Like, it literally has infinite range. It looks like an SMG. And it one-shots people across this map. Like, what? Like, I... <laughs> IW Zombies weapons were different. Some of them are so futuristic like this, and they're so OP. And then some are also just incredibly futuristic and just absolutely downright garbage. Like, this game does not make sense to me. He grabs his sheet up in here. He grabs the final part for Pack Punch, which is under Jug. The amount of controversy that caused back in the day. Oh, I can't even get it out of my ears, man. It's still ringing. It's still ringing, bro. That was, people were so pissed off of that, and rightfully so. I mean, Pack Punch should not be something that you have to genuinely look for like you do on this map. And so, honestly, if there was any casuals playing this game at this point, they probably stopped at this point, because they're like, bro, I'm not looking up a guy to figure out freaking Pap. You kidding me? So, again, he is going through the rounds here. I'm assuming he has to go through a couple rounds. He's round gated for his next step here. And then once he's on to round 10, he'll be able to start. And again, he has Coupon Clipper, which makes, your, I believe, your next purchase absolutely free. And so he's probably going to be using that to pap here. And so all pap is up here. He's able to go in. I'm curious what he's going to pap. He's papping the Type 2 for absolutely darn free. And keep in mind, this is double pap. So in this game, double pap costs 10000 And so he double paps his Type 2 and gets a single papped. Kendall's. He, oh, he actually is going to double pap this. Oh, he's going to have enough. Nice. So he's going to have double pap. Very, very good. And yeah, I'm going to be honest. The Shaolin boss fight, other than Meph, is probably the hardest. There is... The phases are really annoying. They're really not that fun to do. And also, it's just crazy considering that the Type 2 is actually the strap for the speedrun. I would have never guessed that. And so here you go. He got the little teleportation thing, saying the missing reel for Shaolin. He's got to go through a couple zombies here. And then as soon as this is done, now he's going to be able to grab the part, 
place it over here for some reason. What a random step. Like, and then now boss fight is pretty much almost ready because he has almost all of the abilities. He just has to do a couple of these rings around the map and take out the zombies. They do also have to be in the ring, which is just unfortunate. But again, that is why you have to push these rounds and make sure that you have zombies that run at this point. Doesn't even need that freaking insta-kill, I mean, at this point, because, man, Type 2 is just so good. Also, it sucks because these rings are random. Oh, yeah, and then after he does these, these rings, he has to do a disco party step, where he has to take out a zombie that has a disco ball above him. I'm telling you, man, IW was truly something else. You ain't see, you ain't hearing me talk like this on a Treyarch Easter egg, bro. <laughs> Not even a chance, man. Disco balls over zombies? What are you talking about? What do you want about my G? I'm just impressed that the Type 2 is this good. I would have never expected this. I honestly thought this weapon was terrible, but it's almost like it's like a shotgun, single fire, long range, infant down. Like, it's just, this is a different gun for real. It's his mule kick gun too. So yeah, this is, this is really something different. So again, he's looking for the rings. Most of the obvious spawns are near bomb stoppers here. Yep. Like the first spawn and this one. And so, again, for him to be able to be able to beat this egg in, like, six minutes from now, he's going to be on to attack. It's crazy. And attack, listen, I saw it rave, and this map were bad for parts. Attack is the worst zombies map in existence for parts. I'm sorry. If you're upset with Dead of the Night, nah. Attack of the Radioactive Thing is literally 20 times worse. Like, Dead of the Night, you can actually learn, and the parts are not even that bad. To me, Dead of the Night feels more of, like, a game like Clue. You know, like, Chaos X Silencer said that. I do agree with him on that, even though I bashed him on that point. But it is true. It does feel like a game of Clue. Whereas, bro, like, Attack the Radioactive thing feels like you're experimenting a f like a freaking engineer or something, bro. They got me doing a whole rocket science up in here. And so I believe right now he's just trying to end around, yeah, because he needs to end around to start up the next ring and then he's gonna have to do the disco ball step and then after that I'm pretty sure he's able to do boss fight he's just gonna be able to run into the boss fight i like this map's boss fight too because of the fact that the way you start it you just run into the room and i feel like anybody who accidentally found that which is probably nobody unless you were finding this easter egg right at the beginning must have been really cool like that must have been really exciting to experience for the first time and it, it sucks because I remember playing Shallon Shovel with like JC and Liam and all the guys and like we were just not feeling IW. I, I'm gonna be honest, I tried my absolute best to give these maps like my best attempt. And especially because we were coming off of BL3, that's why the expectations were just through the freaking roof for these maps. But now like it was even crazy to think that even then we were disappointed. But to be honest... I still think that even if IW came out today, I don't think the reaction would be much different. I mean, sure, yeah, it would be way better than Vanguard, and it would probably even be better than Cold War. But I still feel like people despise this game because of the goofy aesthetic. I genuinely believe that. Um, so, my man now, also, I just noticed, I don't know how I can watch a speedrunner play for like an hour and just notice the freaking kitten trying to come out come tackle my face on the bottom left like what <laughs> oh man i love speedrunners this is just so funny i love speedrunners also like the last three speedruns i've just watched every single one of them has said this is not good enough and it's world record run <laughs> so i have not heard my man say anything but listen i want him to turn on the mic at the very end and say this is not good enough. That's how you know you've hit a world record. You have to be upset that you hit it. You have to be fuming. You have to be pissed. You can't acknowledge anyone. You just gotta be mad. And then you just end the video, end the recording, and be like, ladies and gentlemen, I hit it. I'm different. But I guess not on IW Zombies. IW Zombie players are for real different. I mean, let me tell you. So here we go. Zombie be dancing. I mean, listen, they. They animated those moves. They did a good job with that. I won't lie. But this step can be very annoying if you don't have a lot of zombies. So you can only take out the one with the disco ball. And you have to make sure that there's another zombie on the dance floor. Or else the disco ball goes away. And sometimes it can glitch out even like this. 
and uh, I think it was even on that crawler there, which is why it glitched out there. And so, yeah, this step can be very glitchy, and it requires you to take out a bunch of zombies in a very slow, like fast succession, I would say. But once you once you do it, it's very fun. And so now this is the final little mini uh, rat king thing to get the heart grenade, which is probably one of the best grenades ever. He's going to be able to grab it now. He's going to talk to Pam, and then it is boss fight time, ladies and gentlemen. Really impressive, considering that, man, he did this whole egg in 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Shaolin Shuffle. Man, oh, man. I am I'm just beyond floored. And then attack, he's going to be able to do faster. Like, if you look at all the splits, like I said, this is the longest run. Shaolin by far is the longest one so here i'm curious to see how he cheeses the rat king step because yeah there's three phases to this he's doing the hardest one first and for this one i genuinely believe on solo you need the card that he has right now explosive touch because you need to take out a zombie on each of the green puddles and the green puddles will literally respawn in all at once if you don't do it fast enough which literally makes this step impossible in my opinion without explosive touch like you literally need to be able to do this instantly and if you fail you'll just run out of ammo and the whole game ends and it is just such a mess and so there he literally was able to damage the rat king before he even got down that's so interesting i never even knew that so now he's on the second phase with the eye here you have to shoot all the symbols it's very easy like if you have the upgraded um kendall 44s here really really easy yeah, he's going to be able to do this like nothing. And then, yeah, take him out even before he TPs down. That is so interesting that the Type 2 split apart like that is the way. And then the final phase is literally the easiest one. This is the brain phase. You literally just let a zombie sit at the brain and then take out the Rat King. You know, that's literally all you have to do. This one is just, you really can't fail this phase. This is like impossible to fail. You literally just let the Grat King take out the zombie that's infected by the brain. I don't understand the implication behind this. I don't know what they were trying to say. I understand what they were trying to do with, like, the other Easter egg steps. And, like, you know, for, like, for example, you get a heart grenade, right? And the step is, to get a heart grenade, you got to sh show some heart. And that's why they have the disco ball step, which, I mean, it makes sense, right? And to get the mind one or the eye one, you have to see what you could not see, right? Makes sense. However, with a brain one here, where the zombie eats the brain and then the Rat King, like, just needs to exist? Why? why? It, it just feels like they ran out of ideas and they're like, bro, let's just, let's just make this the easiest phase possible, you know? Like, this, <laughs> this is gonna be nothing. Because, yeah, there is no way to skip this phase. I've even done this here and it, sh it just feels bizarre because... I mean, this is it. Like, <laughs> this is the gameplay. There's literally nothing different. So, I'm shocked that on his time splits, if you look at it here, actually, he's actually a couple seconds behind. I'm very shocked because he was ahead on Rave. <laughs> I honestly don't know what he could have done more fast on Shaolin to go ahead of his PB here. Because, again, I feel like this is probably the longest time gate in the whole freaking Easter egg run. Is yeah, you literally can't finish it until you get a max ammo. And so you can also start up a freaking trap here, which he does to just maximally damage the Rat King. And that's it. That's time. Wow. That type 2 is actually insane for it to be that powerful. Like, you don't even need the nunchucks. You don't even need the actual wonder weapons to take out the zombies on this map. Just get the freaking type 2. And so Pam Greer here is talking a bunch of BS telling you about where to go next and again the next area is attack of the radioactive thing probably one of my least favorite maps but it is literally top 10 for chaos silencer so let's just skip this we know what's gonna happen here this map when you start it up is absolutely disgusting and so his pb here is 17 minutes and he's 57 minutes here he's running elvira again don't think there's any sort of benefit for doing this instantly gets out of the spawn i would have never thought this wow he literally grabs the same type 2 that he did last time i realized yeah you don't actually need to stay in the spawn because you spawn in with twenty-five thousand points 
So I forgot about that. Yeah, because any other run that I've seen on this without director's cut, you have to stay in the spawn at least for like two or three rounds. So now, uh, he's going to build the one trap that you need to get the zombies. And so, this Easter egg was really cool. You have to build a bunch of stuff and find all the zombie parts, which means you have to find a left and a right arm, a head, a left and right leg, and a torso to literally build a zombie. And again, this map has a little bit too many parts. I agree. It makes sense. It makes sense because you're literally grabbing these parts to build a zombie, which ends up becoming a key, which, I mean, that does not make sense. Let's be real. But it is really cool. I apologize for my freaking hiccups. Also, there's a lot of codes with this one as well, and a lot of knowledge that you have to know to find certain ingredients to know where to pick certain things up. That's what makes this so incredibly difficult because you're just seeing all these other things that he's doing. For nine, like, he's doing this at 900 miles per hour. Just picking up certain things, placing certain things, grabbing certain things. Because look, right here, I'm so sorry. He just grabbed another freaking thing to grab the arm. And now he's also going to grab another zombie part just chilling underneath that part of the bridge. And there's a lot of parts in this map under stuff. Under a bridge, under a car, under the sand. They didn't want people to freaking be beating this map. And I do have to say, I remember watching like a bunch of COD zombie YouTubers go and play this map early. Interesting why he downed here. He's going to keep his perks, but I'm assuming it's to travel somewhere faster. But most people think that this map is graphically the worst looking zombies map ever to be released. And I do agree with this. I think it is truly one of the grossest looking maps ever because it's monochromatic and because it forces you to stay in one visual filter he's probably gonna fill finishing this whole freaking easter egg in like some red blue or green filter and it's just gonna look dis disgusting and that is why like i this probably is my least favorite iw zombies map i i don't i probably like beast more than this one because beast is sure it's a bad map but it's at least more simplistic than this one. But I mean, look at this. You have to throw a grenade in a tree to get a zombie part. Like, there's not a lot of cohesion or sense or logic to even be able to solve this. And this is also one of the first Easter eggs to involve multiplication, division, addition, and not subtraction, but at least addition. And mathematics, I'm going to be honest, if, if we're relating to that in the Easter egg, that just... I mean, nobody's ever said math is fun. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Nobody's ever said that unless they're being held at freaking gunpoint by their own teacher, my guy. And it goes to show with this speedrun because this speedrun, it's it's honestly hard, hard to watch unless you've played this map before because he's grabbing all of these parts, essentially. And they're all for future steps of the Easter egg. So obviously, he there's like certain random things where he has to grab like a glass shard, a little punch card code, this, the parts of the zombie, the gauges for the final chemistry step. And he's trying to end the round here. It's crazy. Oh, he's literally not even scoping in. And that is taking out the zombies faster. But dude, just looking at the bit rate of this map, this map is disgusting. <laughs> just absolutely disgusting. I'm getting hiccups just watching from this for real, bro. And so there you go. He's grabbed all of the part cd is now for the final chemistry step he's got the part that the the machine that he built excavated from under the sand and now he has to go around the map hitting these in a specific order with the pressure gazers with a crowbar and a meat carver and he also needs a freaking mirror here the way that you solve this, like, I think solving this Easter egg must have been really fun. Because when you look at this, you have to activate the trap and grab the torso here. Where, like, other torsos are being uh, held for pig carcasses and stuff. <gasps> They're really cool, man. They even have a little version of the Cronorium in here. And it's just Elvira's book. So, I mean, the innovation was cool. I just think, again, like, it's just all about the execution execution with these maps like this map would be so much better if people didn't like have to spend 900 years like switching out things doing math finding different steps and i think listen even though people like my milo love the final chemistry step of this easter egg it is cool i won't get you wrong but in practicality 
it, it is just horrendous. And so now he's going to be in this entire game through a blue filter because he's going to spawn Elvira in because she's actually what literally creates the pack bunch portals, which is really cool. And uh, there's a lot of little things with this Easter egg. You need to grab all these mirrors. You need to use the right specific melee weapon. You need to be looking at a specific visual filter to be opening up certain things. It's annoying. And so, yeah, she, he swapped the meat carver out because he doesn't need that. You need that to get Elvira. <gasps> but now he needs the crowbar to be able to get a bunch of other certain things without around the maps. And so now he got sent through the pack a bunch to, to an enclosed RV to grab the zombie head. And now he has all of the zombie parts. Again, really fun in practice, but watching this speedrun, I mean, just look at this gameplay. Tell me who was like, this is it. Like, we gotta ship this out immediately. <laughs> you know? To me, does not make any sense. And again, yes, it's not the fastest runs of these maps ever. I should say that because, again, he's doing this consecutively. This step also on solo is annoying because nothing is holding the zombies and it literally takes away your gun here and you have to guess the code he's literally guessing the code here so he's guessing it by when the dot goes over it you have to click the activate button which i'm assuming is f or x or whatever it is whatever he's playing on and so now his code is six five three four eight and his code will now be eight four three five six the way the same code backwards um so six five three four eight eight four three five six will be the code again i'm assuming he's forgetting to place one of the mirror parts down yeah he forgot to place the mirror part down there we go that's why it wasn't working and then so now he knows the code as well so again this is probably the most impressive part of the easter egg speed run because the zombies are all just like chilling they're not going for him and he's able to do this and all of that just to turn a freaking zombie into a key that's it like all those parts like literally 25 parts for a key which is this is why i say dead of the night's better sure dead of the night has a ton of steps but you're not getting all the parts for one part all the parts have a specific origin and matter and they're useful you know so now he is going to see, figure out all of the stuff. Yeah, he's got every single part that he needed for this thing. And he's now going to open up the garage and do the hardest step of this Easter egg, which is the chemistry step. And honestly, I can't, I can't even explain this one. I can't because there's basically ingredients around this map. That, and there's boards around this map as well that you have to look through within these visual filters to know what specific value each of these ingredients are. And you can mix and combine ingredients. How somebody solved this to this day, to me, does not even make sense. Like, I genuinely don't even understand that. And so you have to add all these things up and know the exact chemical that you need to be getting and i don't even think i saw him do the radio step to be able to hear which chemical he's needing to get and so there's two chemicals that are the most common and i'm assuming he's just gonna go for the most common one and see what it is because i mean yeah doing the rate radio step is unnecessary you don't have to do it and so his code for the final boss fight is five six four two seven that is what he needs to input at the final step to be able to blow up the boss and use the nuke inside of the boss that he swallowed. Um, but yeah, the fact that this step is done so quickly, this chemical step, is disgusting. I mean, just, I feel like you could spend a week learning how to do this step optimally because there's so many little parts that you have to know and you have to know the value of them. You have to input things and... You have to add and oh my gosh, like honestly, this is just, this would take you forever. And now he has his freaking chemical and look at that octahydrin 251. Yeah, that's the most common one. And he's boss fight ready round seven. Wow. And he's going in also without anything upgraded because that is the coolest part about this boss fight. You don't need good weapons. You just need to be able to take out the frog looking zombies 
and the regular zombies all at the same time. If you're able to do that, you're able to fully accomplish this Easter egg and beat it. And so now my man is playing Overwatch. He has to take out all of these Reign of Fire type meat meatball meteors and escort the payload over to the boss. Nothing you can do on this step other than unfortunately stick right next to the nuke. There's no way to do this fast. You just have to wait. He does get an incredible infinite ammo drop. That honestly will probably save this run. What an incredibly RNG drop to get here. This is probably where you're seeing some major time split save right here. Because if he gets... He's, is he not even going to pick it up? Homie ain't even going to pick it up. Oh my gosh, he said, I don't need it. Well, dang. Okay, and here I am thinking this is about to save his run. So yeah, again, nothing you can really do here. Again, also the boss, it's three phases, just like the Shaolin boss. But with this boss, again, it's all about taking out the right sort of... Um, it's, it's all about doing it efficiently. A lot of this boss fight, I would say, is just parkour. Like, it's just... You do a parkour step, you know where to be, where to shoot. Because you have to go on these, like, mountain tur mounted turrets that shoot you. He's literally just proning on the wheel, and it's pushing him through. This might actually be a good way... Oh, and he's got explosive touch on. So he doesn't even have to worry about the zombies. Wow. That is unique. Okay, I, this is a new shot I've never seen. I mean, yeah, this, this makes it dumb easy. You can use explosive touch for other parts of this boss fight, but I guess he's decided to use it right at the be very be beginning here. He has the mana up or the health up card because there is a step where you have to take damage and run through uh, like this damage area. But if you do have this mana up card, you'll be able to live, which is again, the cards are unique. They, they are very situational, but for what they're used for, it is so cool. So the nuke is now inside the boss. He's on the charge laser, ready to take down the boss in his weak point. You only have to do this a couple times. And then after you do this, it's the parkour step, then the nuke launch, and then that is it for radioactive thing. I'm telling you, this boss fight is, it's fun. Honestly, I remember doing this the last time co-op I did this was with Milo and Azura, if you can believe that. Rest Rest in peace, my homie Phil. Uh, but, dude, when we did this uh, in L.A. at the Boogie Boys house, it was just so much fun. It was, it was really so much fun, man. Like, I think the worst part about this boss also is that, yeah, if you let any of those green orbs fall on the ground, they spawn in the frog zombies. And it can be very annoying. But, yeah, a lot of the boss is also just waiting for the right opportune moment to get through it. And so now you can see that he's got the gas up. He's going to use the mana card as soon as he wants to run to the gas and activate the nuke, which I believe is the next step that he needs to do here. Uh, but dude, he's killing it. And it's crazy that you don't even need a pack a pack punch gun at all for this Easter egg. Wild how some Easter eggs are like that out here. I mean, with pretty much every other single one on IW, uh, on IW you need a pack gun. Even Shaolin, even Space Sign, Rage. But not this one. He grabbed that nuke perfectly. Wow. Dude, how is that infinite ammo drop still behind him? I just saw that. What the frick? This man just did not pick it up and it's decided to stay there for the rest of the game. I've never even seen that. Oh my god, what the heck? Um, but okay, so here we go. All these guys are coming out. It's so easy to take them out if you have like a fully auto automatic weapon like that. But uh, yeah, the Type 2 probably wouldn't be it. And so... Again, the boss basically makes you go to the very back here. Activates health up here. Doesn't even matter because now you can hit the activation on the nuke. And he's just waiting here. He's just waiting. And there it is. You can literally bypass the whole parkour step. 5, 6, 4, 2, 7. That is time. An hour 12, 41 all the way up until radioactive thing. This is seriously impressive 6KZ, I'm telling you. And here he is switching out all of his gobble gums. Let's just switch all of this, go all of this, because this VOD is two hours long, my, my guy. And now on to the final IW Zombies Easter egg. 
Beast from Beyond. And this is not an easy conclusion. Like I said, this map's Easter egg, you can do really quickly. Like, yeah, you can do it in like sub 10, sub 15 minutes. But what you can't do quickly is beat Mephistopheles. And I'm gonna be honest, Mephistopheles is more about beating him, let alone freaking doing it fast. It's more of a marathon than a sprint, I would say. And so, yeah, with this Easter egg though, it's very easy. It's literally just build a bridge to pack a punch, which is what these like random parts are. Build Neil, take out the extinction aliens while you're here. And I would say, honestly, this map is one of the worst zombies maps ever created. It's unfortunate, but it is the way it is. My man's grabbing weapons because he doesn't even need the points. Like, director's cut 20k points on this. You're going to have more points than you originally need. Also, I feel like the box luck on this run is probably going to be insane. But he doesn't really even need the greatest box luck. He just needs to use the EBR, which is a sniper rifle that's fully automatic. It just melts the rhino boss, the blue rhino boss in this. And so also he's getting the ghost and skulls. You have to do a bit of the ghost and skull Easter egg, which is legitimately harder to do than the actual Easter egg on this, I would feel like, because ghost and skulls is what gives you perma perks. But I mean, you don't even, they're kind of useless Easter eggs because you can just run director's cut once you beat all the eggs, right? So once the ghost and skulls are all shot, then he's going to be able to progress. And yeah, this Easter egg, I mean, it's not fun to speedrun because I remember I've done this Easter egg probably over 20 or 30 times. And the reason why is because I wanted to be the idiot that said I beat Mephistopheles on solo back in the day when this map first came out because that was genuinely a genuinely hard feat to do. And I'm proud to say that I did end up doing it. It was difficult. It was really impossible at the beginning, but I'm so glad I did it. Not many people can say that they've beaten Mef solo. And if you have, I would say you're one of the best players ever. That was a really incredible skip there where he just jumped up through the crates like that. Ne never actually seen something like that. So again, this will be very, very interesting. And the reason why he had to do all of that is to get the little freaking entangler device which allows you to hold objects which is unfortunately something you're going to be needing to do here and he's able to grab it while the door is literally closed yeah you need this freaking ash astronaut helmet to shoot through this force field and through the computer monitors to shut it off he gets his little key card part and again there is a little coat that you get for all the key cards here it's so impressive to see how these guys are able to do this. And yeah, you need all these key cards. And then once you enter the key cards in the right specific order and you escort Neil's head. I said Ned's head before. I'm so sorry, Neil. My man, Neil, don't, 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 don't make fun of me, man. I love you, Neil. I've only played this map 900 times. Let you know your name at this point. Uh, but once you do that, it's pretty much easy. I'm curious, though, what he's going to run into the boss fight fight because i'm gonna be honest if he doesn't grab the ebr here from the box i think he's gonna have an incredibly hard time and that will easily cause the reasoning as to why the run is taking like or the run was a little bit longer in certain areas but i mean radioactive thing he definitely got, got ahead of his splits he got a whole freaking two minutes ahead of his split that's a huge deal so and that's why like i'm gonna be honest i think this easter egg speed run can be b beat and it is even recently it's just bro you got to play like two hours straight pretty much to even have a ch chance and you have to have pretty much perfect rng here and so he has to put all of these key cards into the specific order on neil and then he's going to be able to grab neil and bring him out this easter egg can be very annoying man because you have to know the specific um the specific part pieces and all that and the order and the way you have to get them it's a part easter egg and i'm not a fan of those to be honest unless they're like actually fun parts <laughs> like the, as soon as you use the key cards here that's pretty much it like that's it you know there's really nothing much outside of that so here it is final disc is in he actually uses an any road but here card here which i'm shocked has not been used before this point it's crazy that this is the only map that uses it and it's to use it to literally grab a button to shoot in the beast from beyond poster to put right here to be able to activate this stupid lockdown thing oh it's so annoying yeah you just have to hit it per perfectly get them all either horizontal or vertical 
which he did right there. Jailbreak the system. And now he's going to be able to grab Neil's head through the thing. It would be interesting if he was able to grab Neil right from the top there, like he was showing. But, I mean, he, didn't, he ain't even going to need to. And so, yeah, literally, this is the final step of this Easter egg. What a terrible map. What a terrible Easter egg. Nobody remembers it for that reason. You put Neil in pop. And he literally just becomes the entrance to the boss fight. It's uh, it's generally crazy how it would be working like that. So there you go. He's going to upgrade the EBR. I didn't even see him grab it. The EBR is a wall weapon on this map. And so if you do have that variant, oh my gosh, does it make it just easy. Yeah. He's going to activate. He reanimated here, which is a great call considering that he's probably going to go down on the Mephistopheles boss fight. Like that boss fight is insane. The EBR here with this specific variant that you have to grab from inside of the game you can't just get this regularly it's a specific variant you can look it up the exact name i can't remember which one but dude it's the only way to cheese this boss fight so fast like these rhinos without the ebr are just insanely o overpowered they take forever they're literal bullet sponges but with this ebr it's a joke, like they don't even spawn in. He's literally pre-aiming the exact points where they're going to spawn in as well. Because Deadshot, it works a little bit differently in this. It actually gives you, I think, more damage based on how long you aimed in, which is why the skulls pop up when you see that, when it's fully ready to shoot. And so, man, IW was a great game. Honestly, we just watched all of IW Zombies today, and I could not be more proud. I just wish that more of this would come out, to be honest. It just sucks that, like, IW's sort of given up on this. You know, they did a lot with um, Modern Warfare and all of their other previous titles, like Modern Warfare 2019. But, sadly, Zombies by IW has been left in the wayside. And, I mean, it makes sense because the people that made this don't even work at IW anymore. Lee Ross doesn't work there. And so, it just makes me sad because... I feel like this type of quality could easily come back from IW. And yeah, zo Zombies doesn't have to only be a Treyarch thing. Like, what Activision do has done now is they just made Treyarch work on Zombies on all the freaking games. Which is like, okay, well, so now we're going from one good Zombies game every three years to three trash games every year. And so that doesn't solve anything. But for Activision, it does. So, I mean, it will until people start cluing in that the Zombie modes that they're selling are absolutely garbage which i feel like is finally happening now in modern warfare 3 not to say that black ops cold war was bad but just to say that vanguard should not have even came out the door for real and so here he's even using the ebr to take out all of the, the freaking aliens here which is really smart i should have done this for my um easter egg run where i did all these maps because the ebr is much more powerful than i realized and so i believe now the blue rhino will be spawning here any second as soon as he is done these areas yeah he has to basically hold down like for a minute and a half then go down directly below where he is and then go for the computer which will then allow him to um redirect the laser because the laser is actually targeting him right now but because he's in a crate it's not killing him um, and the laser will shoot out the crate with the blue rhinos and he'll just be instantly able to beat this And so as soon as he beats this he'll be teleported back into the arcade machine area And then he'll be able to choose his specific guns that he's gonna run for Mephistopheles And so yeah, he also needs to turn off all the portals here The evade card is so useful here. Oh my goodness Is it ever because of the fact that you can get trapped so easily by these aliens? They are just so annoying. I feel like and so here he's grabbing ammo for free. Like, th this boss fight was so hard, they literally gave you a whole ammo box for free in here to do it. Like, I've never even seen that, man. And so, it's also crazy that he's literally on this boss fight, I just realized, on round freaking two? Round two? Like, I'm telling you, you can tell when these developers put time into the Easter egg that, and make it actually fun. Or when they just want you to actually suffer. Like, they legitimately just want you to suffer at this point. For real. There's no other way around this right now. Like, let me just look at your gameplay on the screen right now. Um, so. Again, he's waiting for the timer to go down. I forgot that you have to turn off the portals and then wait for the timer to go down. Because, essentially, this whole map's Easter 
is just turn off the security of the map. You're in a freaking high def or high futuristic uh, security cell. And you just got to turn off the AI to let you out and take out all the aliens, bro. This is freaking society. Is Breeze from the Beyond a future prediction of how our society is going to be? I mean, I think it really is. It's just sadness. So, again, this is going to be interesting because on his time split, he's 13 minutes away from beating the whole freaking Easter egg. The whole super Easter egg. And that includes meth. And that is why I'm like... Is he really about to beat Mephistopheles in 10 minutes? And again, there is a boss fight mode on this map or on this game. And so uh, the boss fight mode allows you to practice these boss fights, which is why I think they're so efficient at them. And uh, yeah, he's just he's just parkouring around because he just needs to screw with the spawns. He doesn't even need to kill him. Honestly, it's a waste of time and ammo to kill them. So it doesn't really matter here again. Another time gated step. He's got about, I think it said 20 seconds on that little monitor that he's got here. And then once the 20 seconds is up, he's going to be able to go off and into this boss fight. Which, again, with the EBR, is going to literally last him like 20 seconds. It's looking like his last PB here was tw 1 hour and 26 minutes. And he could legitimately beat that by a whole minute at the very minimum right here. Because he's literally at the final phase of this boss fight. So, again, 6K Z-Man, very impressive role. This is seriously, like I said, two people max in the entire Earth could pull this off, in my opinion. Because doing these cumulatively, and then also having perfect RNG and perfect boss fights, it's just different, man. Like, seriously, the only thing worse than this is, like, the thing that I saw that Insomnia Virus did with like the endurance i would say which is around 100 on every bl3 map in seven days like that is just unhealthy my guy just straight up unhealthy and so here the boss spawns he killed them before they even got out what? no way i'm i'm shocked i'm f i'm floored they didn't even come. The door didn't even open. He took them out. I didn't even know you could do that. 6KZ. That is insane. Okay, so now I'm going to be skipping this because this is all freaking box hitting. Let's go into the final phase here of the Mephistopheles boss fight, which is Lee Ross at the end of the day. It is so cool how the Easter egg speedrun does count this. And so the fact that he's going to be able to do this in sub 11 minutes is insane and it's wild to think that if he failed the boss fight even once right here the whole run that whole hour and a half of all the other easter eggs that he just did would be meaningless utterly meaningless and so for those of you that don't know mephistopheles this is the hardest easter egg boss fight in all of call of duty zombies those fireballs can instantly take you out even with jug so you can instantly be down by that. You always have to look at him and be able to avoid the fireballs. You can see here that he literally almost died. You do need the Venom X Wonder Weapon, which you can get upgraded. You have to stand in each of the five symbols here. And then once you are doing that, uh, the Mephistopheles boss will sh shoot out a bunch of souls or it'll come out of the symbol and use the Entangler to throw the souls at him. Which, I would, man, he did that crazy fast. Then you shoot his weak point, And then he comes into the middle. And literally, you just have to chill. And he will spawn in a bunch of zombies where you have to get rid of them. And then once you have done all five of the symbols, which is very difficult because he has crazy attacks that, like, divide the map in half. Like, spawn a bunch of different zombies. It's not an easy boss fight. He can summon like a fire tornado. It's seriously insane. And so, of course, he has the Venom X, the Mauler Sentinel variant, which has like these vertical bullet trajectories. You can see it by the bullets that he's coming out with the spray. Wow. So, also, he's going to activate Evade here. You do get all your cards back. I love the symbol on the bottom right. Like, Beast from Beyond was bad, so Mephistopheles could be good. For real, Beast from Beyond walked, so Mephistopheles could run. That is actually how I feel about this final Easter egg. And yeah, he sends out a meteor shower. And then that's phase one. 
And then so phase two now is each symbol is another phase. And so look at that. He just hurls a freaking meteor from the middle of space. Easily one of the most cool boss fights ever. And one of the hardest ones ever too. Like you're just in the middle of the galaxy. Like Treyarch didn't do this. I mean they did with Revelations. But like bro the Revelations boss fight was a joke compared to Mephistopheles man. And Mephistopheles isn't even Treyarch. You know? So, just goes to show how crazy it was at the time. And the way he's able to throw out these souls so fast is genuinely impressive. Because, like, he's just tapping his trigger perfectly to be able to do that. And so, second symbol is down. And then, yeah, once you shoot all the symbols, he literally loses his protection. And then you can take him out like the Raven the Redwoods boss like he saw. So, it's really interesting because this boss is also an amalgamation of all of the other IW zombie bosses. And that, to me, is just genius. I'm sorry, like, that is low-key genius. That is seriously one of the smartest things you could ever do for a boss fight, I think. Especially something like a super Easter egg boss fight. Because I think this is quite literally the only super Easter egg boss fight ever released. There's never been a boss, a super Easter egg that has given us a boss fight. There have been super easter egg rewards like the arcade 5 or the purple rarity in cold war but nothing like this man nothing not even close and so i'm curious to see if he even downs even once because i'm gonna be honest even a lot of the easter egg world records that i've seen just for mephistopheles or even just for beast from beyond these these like world record holders they even sometimes can down because some of the bosses they spawn in can be just brutal. Like, I know there's a phase where he literally spawns in right at the end. I believe he spawns in the rhinos that were the literal boss fight from the map that you just beat, Beast from Beyond. So, again, I remember when this boss fight came out, and it took it took players, I think, a good week to beat this boss fight. For real, like, learning all the strats and stuff. It took players, I think, a solid week. Like, Smart Guy was the first person to beat the solo, and that was a huge deal back in the day. Because I was like, bro, that is seriously impressive that somebody has even gone out and beaten this whole thing solo without any guides. Like, they had to just dot, rinse, and repeat, trial and error the whole thing. That is crazy. So, three symbols are up. Also, there is a little bit of an extension of this meteorite arena here. Uh, the reason why he's staying here is because this spot is the best spot to essentially see the whole area and take out all of the zombie spawns that he throws in. And each wave, he throws in something different. So it could be the clowns. It could be the slasher from Raven the Redwoods. It could be the ninja zombies from Shaolin. And so, honestly, like I said, this boss fight is really, really well done. It it makes sense like from all aspects. It combines all of the other features. It is like the perfect conclusion for this game. And seriously, this game is better than most games. That freaking fireball went right towards my guy. Literally, some of them you can't even avoid. Like That's the problem with this boss fight. That's what makes it so difficult. There's damage sometimes that you just have to take. I don't think I've ever seen or will ever see a boss fight run of this boss fight where you don't take damage. I genuinely, I mean, maybe it's possible, but I, as of right now, I don't think anybody has done it. I know somebody's done like the Garad Krovi Easter egg only using the Beely, and that, I'm gonna be honest, is outright absurd. How do you even do that? How do you take out Nikolai or the Dragon Beely only? I don't even think that's possible. So, uh, yeah, for real. So, Fourth symbol is coming up here. He does show his new attack here where literally if you are in the way of that ground slam, I'm pretty sure it's just an instant death. He has so many instant death moves that like this boss fight also takes a lot even from Der Eisendrak, right? Where like you have to stand behind the pillars and take cover. You have to make sure that you're cycling your weapons and taking out the panzers or like the bosses that IW has on this. So... It's kind of like IW and the Keeper boss from Darius Drac all mixed together. And I think that's what makes this so, so special, man. <laughs> 30 seconds ahead of his previous PB as well. He's going to be able to absolutely floor it, man. Like, yeah, honestly, 
He still has two phases after this. He has the phase where it's his fifth symbol to get rid of the protection of Mephistopheles. And then the final damaging phase with the Mauler as well. And so, look at that red screen right here, bro. I'm telling you, he's down. There's, this is what I'm saying. This, this is what I'm saying, y'all. This is what I'm saying. Luckily, though, Director's Cut does keep you up. He doesn't have up and atoms, but his reanimated card will be good enough. And so, again, I mean, that down in and of itself proves that this is beatable. But, dude, I wouldn't even want to go for it, bro. Like, you literally have to perfect pretty much all of the maps before it just to do better on the, the meth boss fight. Insane. Insane. And so, yeah, I feel like most zombie records now that they've been sitting now for probably at least five years, except for Cold War. Even Cold War is coming up on three, though. Uh, I feel like there's just been so much time now to be able to beat all of these Easter eggs. And that's what's going to make all these speedruns almost impossible to beat, just because a lot of the skips have been found. Not all of them, but a lot of them have been. And so it makes you wonder, like, how much more can we evolve? Like, what farther can we do? You know? Just just because this is already just so impressive in and of itself. I don't even think an hour 30 sub that is possible, let alone, like, sub one hour or anything. Nah, man. This is as fast as you can go. And so here he is. The fight phase is done. You can see all the symbols are ready to go. The man is in his final damaging phase. He needs to shoot the freaking symbol off of his chest, which he is doing right now, and also taking out the Mephistopheles boss, doing as much damage as he can. And then the final phase, once he's damaged in enough, is he's going to charge up one final attack, and if you take him out before he releases it, it's GG. And that's what makes this so much fun, in my opinion. And so, he's just layering into the boy. Layering into the boy. And here he is. The final attack is incoming. He is charging it up. He's actually at the outskirts of the arena. So, he doesn't actually get hit by that. He doesn't have to stand behind the pillar. I never knew that. Interesting. So many cool little skips happening with this man. So, the meteorite is sent out. He's, he's just layering into the boy. Ooh, another down. So if he did not pull out reanimated here, that would have been game over right there. And that's what I'm saying, y'all. Sometimes it's just straight up unavoidable. There's just so much damage. He's spawning in clowns. He's shooting his fireballs. He got the fire twister. This is it. And so right now, I'm. he must have been freaking out right now. Because listen, he one more down, it's game over. So he can't down even once. He has to do this perfectly. My gosh, and just avoiding the fireballs is insane. And so, yep, final thing is is to activate all of the five talismans that he's gotten up here. And this will get rid of his protection. Doing this with the fire twister and fireballs happening at the same time. Oh my gosh, my guy, 6KZ. Here it is. Meph has been brought to the middle. This is pretty much GG. At this point, he did the hardest part, which is avoid all of that. I'm so shocked. And there he is. Holding right trigger because he doesn't even need to ADS. He knows he's got this in the bag now. GG 6KZ, man. Wow, oh, wow. There is Mephistopheles. Take it out on round two. Hour 35, 46 for every single IW Zombies Easter egg. That is incredible, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you guys go check out 6KZ. Thank you guys so much for coming out to the video. If you did enjoy, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see y'all in that next one, ladies and gentlemen.